Hello and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, your host, broadcasting to you live from webinar headquarters in Middleton, Idaho. Today we have Guy Tsipa, who is with us live at My Heritage headquarters in Or Yehuda, Israel, for his class, My Heritage Mobile App New Features. So thanks to Guy and thanks to all of you for registering for today's live webinar, wherever and whenever you are. Glad to have you with us. And I hope this is on your calendars for this coming September. If you've ever wanted to visit Amsterdam, here's your chance to do that and to take in a genealogy conference at the same time. The second annual My Heritage Live will be held September 6th through the 8th. More information or to register is available at live2019.myheritage.com. And now I'd like to formally introduce today's speaker, Guy Zipa. Guy is responsible for the MyHeritage iOS and Android apps. He leads a talented team that includes developers, QA engineers, and a designer to give MyHeritage users the best experience on their mobile devices. He comes from the MyHeritage R&D department, where he served as a release manager for the mobile team. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give Guy Zipa a nice warm webinar welcome. Uh, Guy, how are you, and welcome to the show. I'm good, Jeff. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's so good to have you here. I'm anxious to find out about uh, what's been happening in the mobile app, and we've got just the guy here to do that. So, uh, uh, Guy, thanks, uh, and the time's all yours. Okay, great. So, first of all, I'm very happy to be here to talk to you. Um, about some of the new features and capabilities that we've been uh, working on the, on the last few months. So um, if you have already have the app, I think uh, you'll learn something cool and new today. And if you don't have the apps, uh, hopefully I'll show you enough that you'll uh, consider adding it to your uh, genealogy repertoire. So uh, for those not so familiar with the MyHeritage mobile app, um, we have the following. We're available on the following platforms. So, of course, on the website, all uh, major supported browsers, on the desktop, Windows, and Mac OS on the Family Tree Builder, and the platforms I'm here to talk to you about, the uh, mobile apps on iOS and Android. Sorry, Windows Phone. Um, as with most apps, you can get them on the App Store. Just uh, go to uh, the iOS App Store or Google Play and search for MyHeritage, and it will be the first result there. Just tap on install and download, and you'll be on my heritage in no time. Um, so, just a quick overview to show some of the uh, most common or uh, basic features on the on the my heritage app. So, of course, we have the family tree, um, where you can build your tree, add information to individuals, and uh, record their stories. Uh, we have the discoveries, where you can discover new information about the people in your tree via smart matches or tree matches, as some of you call them, and uh, via record matches. We have the DNA pages, which include the ethnicity estimate, uh, DNA matches, and some of the DNA tools. We have uh, photo albums. Um, since it, this is a mobile app, it's very easy to upload and share photos, so uh, we've optimized sharing photos, uh, searching historical records, and of course, messaging. You can see I hit a bit of the people to uh, not disclose them, but um, we're very proud of our messaging system, so you can uh, collaborate with other MyHeritage users and share information. Okay, so uh, now that we have some of our bases covered, let's move on to uh, the topic of the night, the new features. So the first new feature I want to talk about is actually one of the biggest. Uh, it's a new home screen for the app. And I'll show it to you via a video. So uh, there's a lot to unpack here. So let's start from top to bottom. So at the top, you'll see the menu button, the hamburger. Here you'll see the app menu with all the options, the navigation as it was before. And on the other side, you'll see the inbox where you can access all your messages. Now, all the top third of the homepage, uh, there's a family uh, photo. Tapping on it, let's see, 
tapping on it will show this menu where you will be able to uh, view the whole photo, remove the cover photo, replace it, or if you have uh, multiple family sites, you can switch sites via this menu. So under it, we have a section labeled Latest Discoveries. Here we'll feature all the new and latest discoveries that your family tree has received. So here we can see a person discovery. It's a discovery that can add 40 people to your tree based on a smart match. Swiping it, we'll see another type of discovery, a photo discovery. And this type can actually add photographs to people in your tree that don't currently have photos. So it's a great way to discover uh, what people uh, may have looked like that you didn't know before and add some color and photographs to your family tree. And swiping once again, we'll see a record match, the latest record match for your family tree. Um, it's a record based on a North Carolina newspaper, as you can see. And finally, if I swipe again, we'll see a view all button, which uh, tapping on that will take me to the discovery section. So let's scroll a bit down. And we have uh, the latest DNA matches section. So here, for those of you who have DNA kits, we'll uh, feature the latest DNA matches and uh, always show you all the newest matches. Um, I won't swipe here to not disclose uh, information of uh, real people, but swiping will show you uh, several more DNA matches and hopefully you'll find something worthwhile. Now on the top right of this section, you'll see my name and tapping it will let you toggle between all the kits you manage. So if you manage multiple kits, you'll be able to switch to another one and see that kit's DNA matches. So swiping a bit down once again, we'll see a small research widget. Here we'll be able to uh, type in uh, first name and last name real quick and jump into our historical record collection. Or we can tap on advanced and go to the research form. And last but not least, we'll get some suggestions to invite to our family tree. Um, this, these are people based on your family tree and uh, we'll obviously suggest to invite them to help you collaborate and build your family tree. Now, since this is the mobile app, you'll be able to invite them via text message or email address. So this is just the start of the family homepage. Um, oh, hopefully we'll be, not hopefully, but we'll be working to improve it um, much more. We'll add more relevant information for you. And basically our goal is to give you the most relevant, most interesting information immediately once you open the app. So uh, you won't need to look for it too deeply and we'll have it right there. And um, eventually you'll have a nice browsing experience and all the most useful information right in front of you. So let's move on. Okay, so um, one of the basic features on the website, which didn't exist on the app yet, is viewing other people's trees. Now, I know a lot of you don't always trust smart matches or tree matches, as some of you call them. And often this feeling is justified. Uh, most of you don't want, sorry, most of you want to vet the information you save from other trees and make sure that other trees are uh, based on solid information. So for that, we added the ability to view other trees. So you can do it from smart matches, as you can see on the screen here, from the bottom part on the orange text where it says the family site and the family tree. Or you can do it from a DNA match from the big view tree button. Now tapping on those, will take you to the other person's screen. You'll see a message telling you you're visiting another, uh, another user's family tree and that some of the information is private. You'll be able to toggle it between the family view and the pedigree view, and you'll be able to search for people. Now on that note, another feature um, a lot of you have been asking for is to pick and choose the information you want to take from matches and not just copy the whole thing. Um, for this, we added the extract feature where you can select the exact information, the exact facts, uh, relatives, and photos you want to save. So this is a typical uh, smart match screen. 
you can see the top uh, asks you if this is the same person and you ask to confirm or reject that fact. So you can scroll down and compare all the information. Any information that's new on the match and doesn't exist on your tree will have a new or improved badge, as you can see on the right side. You can see the facts, the relatives, and sometimes, if you're lucky, some photos. And once you've decided that this is the same person, you'll want to confirm it. Now at this stage, you've confirmed the match and you're asked if you want to save in any of the new information. So up till now, you were only able to dismiss it or save the entire thing. So now you'll be able to select or deselect the individual pieces of information, like the individual facts, the individual photos, and even the relatives. Now, I know a lot of you are mostly sensitive about adding new relatives that you don't know from other people, other trees. So what, what you want to do here is take a look at the new relative that is suggested to you. And you want to make sure that the same person doesn't already exist in your tree, maybe under a different name, uh, basically to avoid duplicates. So in this case, you'll want to tap on the In Your Tree button. Sorry, might have missed it. In your tree on the on the right hand side and that will show all the people related to uh, Walt Disney in this case in your tree so you'll be able to compare and make sure that Sharon isn't already in your tree once you've decided the information you want you'll be able to uh, hit confirm and save the information if you're not yet sure, you can always contact the site manager with the little uh, name at the bottom in orange and send him any message uh, or inqu inquiry you want. Okay, now another feature we're very excited about is the new research feature. So we've completely revamped the research forms in the app to help you uh, find historical records easier and improve the overall experience. So the new research forms have been out for iPhones for quite, uh, quite a while, a few months, but only have recently been released for Android. So as you can see, there's a whole new UI here. This is the basic form. Uh, you'll see the title research, the number of historical records, and then you'll see two tabs all records or by collections, meaning you can search in all the records or search by collection. So let's start from the top. Search all records, you can uh, fill in the basic form here. It has all your uh, classic fields like first name, last name, year of birth, place, keywords, and also you can toggle if you want it with translation or exact search. If you have uh, further information, you want to drill in a bit and uh, make a more complicated query, you can always enable the advanced search here and add additional things like gender. You can add events if you know the person's birth date or maybe death, marriage, so on. You can add multiple events. So if you added a birth, you can tap on add another event and add a marriage. And you can do this until uh, basically how many, how many you feel. And you can add relatives. So if you know the father or the, or the mother or the sister of the person you're looking for, you can add it here. And this also supports multiple relatives, similar to the multiple events. Now, if I want to clean this messy form, I'll just tap on the top right on the clear button and we'll have a clear form. So this was the search in all records, a pretty basic search. Um, the new thing that we added in the app is searching by collection. So if you switch the tabs here, first of all, you'll see all the collection categories that we have starting with census and photos list and the number of collections they hold down to maps. 
So if we know the collection we're looking for, that's easy. We'll just tap on the search bar. We'll, we'll look for, let's say, a census collection. And we'll see all the census collections that we have in MyHeritage. So let's select the 1940s United States Federal Census. And we'll see that collection specific search form. So anything I search here will only be searched in this collection of 1940s United States Federal Census. You can, of course, view more information by expanding that button and closing it and fill in the fields. And the nice thing is if you come back to the search field, you'll see all the collections that you searched previously. Now, if we don't know the collections we're looking for and we just want to browse, which I like to do sometimes, um, let's just go ahead and dive right in. Let's pick a birth, marriage, and death. And we'll be taken to this page. This is what we call the category page. And we'll see on the, we have a horizontal scroll at the top and a vertical scroll on the rest of the page. So the vertical scroll, the cells here represent all the different collections. You can see England and Wales birth index. And as many as there are, there's a lot. And on the horizontal scrolls, it's the subcategories. So let's say I only want to see the collections of birth records. I'll select this cell and it will filter only the birth record collections and marriage and divorce, death and burial, and so on and so on. Now, if I want to search in all of the birth, marriage, and death records, I'll tap on the three dot button here. We have a little menu come up. It says birth, marriage, and death, and search all records. I'll, I'll tap on that. And I'll have the specific search form for birth, marriage, and death. So basically any type of search you want, you can pretty much do here. And the options are pretty much limitless. Okay. So another feature we did, this one's a bit smaller, but I think it will be useful for a lot of you. We have the tree list feature in the app. So basically it lists all the people in your tree and we added a new sorting option to sort it by last added. So this is very useful for all of you that are currently building your tree. So if you wanna pick up where you left off and continue from the last people you added, you can just select the sort option and continue building. Okay. Now, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we really encourage photo sharing and up uploading and managing your family photos. So now on iOS, it's easier than ever to do so. We released this share widget. So basically, up until now, you were only able to upload photos from the MyHeritage app. So now, we've added the ability to basically upload from any Photos app. So it could be the basic uh, iOS Photos app or Google Photos or Dropbox or any photo app you can imagine. You, could, you select the image you wanna upload to MyHeritage and you tap on the share button you make sure that the MyHeritage icon appears there. If it doesn't, you want to tap on the more button and turn it on. And you tap on the MyHeritage icon, the little widget comes up and you're asked to add it add a photo title. Now, since this is obviously JFK, I'll add his name. Sorry about that, skipped a bit. I'll add JFK and I wanna add, add him to a specific family tree. So I'll tap on the family tree row 
and I'll see a list of all the family trees I own in all the family sites. So currently it's selected on Kennedy Family in Kennedy Family Sites, which is exactly the site I want. And once I'm in the site I want, I want to choose where to upload it, the photo to. So I'll tap on Upload To. And now I have several options. I can either upload it to a specific album, say family photos, or a specific event like a family picnic, an anniversary, et cetera, et cetera. Or I can upload it directly to a person. So in this case, I'll upload it directly to JFK. and hit post. And now all I have to do is go back to the app and see that it's there. Yep, there we have it. And furthermore, now if I want to add additional information, I'll select edit photo info. I'll add a date, a place, a description, anything I want to enrich the, the data, the media. There we have it. And the last feature I want to talk to you about is something we, that we just released both on iOS and on Android. And this feature we call the family timelines. Um, the whole background of this feature is that we wanted to give ourselves and our users a way to experience their family stories in a very, let's say, uh, beautiful and pretty uh, feature and experience and to be able to share it with other family members. So for this, we built the family timelines feature. You can access it from the icon at the top right, the little clock. This is me, by the way. I'll go ahead and tap on the icon. And we get to the timeline cover photo. I see my photo, my name, and a call to action to swipe to start. So let's go ahead and do that. And from here on, I'll see all my uh, close family's events, the facts that I add to the tree in a chronological order with really nice animations and images and uh, scroll through my family's story. Uh, we found this to be very fun ourselves. Um, I encourage everyone to try it. It shows uh, birthdays, anniversaries, uh, education, graduations, military services, and so on. Uh, you can swipe by every individual event or at the wheel of on the wheel at the bottom if you want to scroll fast and kind of live through your family story. Um, one thing I, I like to do, I found enjoyable, is to cast my phone on a TV, if you have Apple TV or Chromecast, and uh, share this uh, feature with the rest of my family. And um, I think that's about it. That's what we have for you today. Um, well, Guy, yeah. I've I've got a family reunion coming up in uh, in just a couple of weeks, and and I've been I've been thinking of uh, media and what what can I do to you know show something on the big screen about our family, and that's a neat idea. That timeline is in it's designed it's beautiful like well done uh you, yeah, you guys you. We're really excited about it oh i really like i like that it's like a, the the dial at the bottom of that that's it's that's awesome it's you've you guys have been working very hard uh that that was neat well um thank you. Uh, so thank you guys so several questions have come in and so uh, let's just let's just go to some questions here and then uh, we'll go over and, and we've got a couple of uh, really great door prizes. And then uh, if you have any other questions out there around the world, just type them in. Um, so looking at my phone here, Guy, and I've had a couple of other questions here about this too. Um, my screen doesn't yet look like the screens that you were showing us. So is is there an update that I need to go and get? Or how do I make sure that I have the latest 
so yeah so first thing i would recommend is always get the latest version it means it will you will have all the latest features and also the best uh, performance and stability uh -huh. um, most of the features i showed are already available to everyone except for the home screen which we're uh, rolling out a bit slower oh okay but it will soon be available to everyone okay so uh so i've gone into google play i've got an android phone here and uh, it it does not show me there's an update, so I probably have the latest. And is, so if I want to go into into the timeline, um, where lead me lead me on my phone here that that you can't see. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where do I where do I go to get to that timeline? Now, so my That's home no screen, problem. I've got on my home screen, I've got uh, five icons, tree discoveries, and and they're at the bottom bottom half of the screen. Okay, so you can go to the family tree. Okay. Um, select any person from your family tree. Okay, I've clicked on my name. Oh, and then there at the top right is that is that icon that you were telling us about. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. Okay, so it's there. It's so uh, thank you, uh, guy. Uh, so for all those who are asking about this, yet, uh, and it's just the home screen is not yet rolled out to everyone. And so that's why ours might look a little bit different than what you're showing, but that will eventually um, come and likely as an update guy, uh, will, will we get some kind of notification on our phone that there's a new update to install or should we just go into Google Play or into the, the Apple Store to um, do that? So some of you probably have automatic updates. If not, I encourage you to periodically check for updates on the Google Play or okay. iOS App Store. Okay. Yeah, I think mine, I've got the automatic updates. I mean, that must be my default setting because I don't think I've changed that. And so, yeah, mine always keeps up to date. So everyone out there, uh, just, just check that out. Just go into the Google Play or what is it called on iOS? Is it called App, what, App Store? App, or I, App Store. The yeah, App Store. <laughs> Um, exactly. So go in there, everyone, and just see if uh, do a search for my heritage, like Guy mentioned, and see if there is an update. And if it says open, like mine did, then that means I've got the latest one, and and uh, uh, very good. Um, and if you uh, sorry to interrupt, and if you like the app, please uh, leave us a uh, five star rating and a review. We really appreciate them. Well, and uh, hopefully you like it. And if you don't, I'll be happy to hear from you. Okay. Yeah, that timeline. That's. <laughs> I, I just love it, Guy. You totally surprised me here today. That was awesome. Good. That was my point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Lynn, that answers your question. Uh, Valerie is wondering, when you belong to multiple sites, how do you choose the home site? Valerie says that hers opens to the last one that she joined. Is it possible to switch? So, yeah, I believe that's actually an option you can do on the websites, but not on the app currently. Oh, okay. Um, I believe uh, on the website it's under uh, home family sites. Okay, and so if you ch you change to a different one there, will the will the different tree be the one that opens in the app? Yeah, so basically okay. that just determines which uh, family tree opens first. But okay. once you switch to your preferred tree on the app, that's the one that will open up next time. Okay, perfect. Uh, that answers that question very well. Um, Gene is wondering about the syncing, <clears throat> and maybe you can just uh, just give a quick overview or a quick clarification. Um, yeah, sure. So if I so if you're actually, sorry. yeah, so if you're doing something on your phone in the My Heritage app, you add a new date or a new picture. When you go online, it's going to be updated there as well. Is that true, guy? So yeah, so this is actually a question uh, I get a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, you're absolutely correct. It behaves exactly like the website. Once you update something on the app, it automatically syncs online. Good. That's the yeah. That's the beauty of this. You don't even have to get out of bed, and you could be doing family exactly. history. Um, good. Uh, Mark, who says he got in late? Uh, yes, these these features are available on both iOS and. Android, or at least the app is available for both of them. Um, and Lynn, we answered yours. Douglas, we I, we walked through how to find the timeline. Yeah, Barbara, this is an interesting question. That t the, the timeline tool here, which is just beautiful, is that only on the app, or is that a part of the online environment as well? That's just on the app. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
So, so to, happily, you will have to get the apps to get it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, and uh, Valerie is also wondering: uh, is should it look similar if you're using a, like an iPad versus an iPhone? Okay, so that's a great question. A lot of the features uh, are similar, but some aren't. So we try to, let's say, optimize the experience for uh, small screens for on the phones, and for bigger screens, we kind of uh, stay closer to the website. Ah. So, for example, uh, research. The research feature looks more like the website on tablets and iPads than the one I showed on the phone. Okay. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Don is wondering, is, is the use of this app available only if you have a MyHeritage subscription? Um, so basically the, the way it works is the same features that are free on the website are also free on the app and vice versa. So the paid features on the app are also the paid features on the website. But the family timeline, I'm happy to say, is free. Oh, neat. Okay. Uh, and then speaking of the family, family timeline, Cassandra is wondering, can we change the background that's in the timeline? I'm afraid not. That's the design of the, of the feature. But, of course, you can change the photo of the people in it. Okay. Well, it it looks good as it is. <laughs> um, okay, uh, thanks, Cassandra. It, and she's also asking if I invite others to view the tree, will they be able to use the timeline tool in the app on their phone? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Okay. I like that. Uh, boy, questions are coming in uh, quickly, and uh, you're doing very well here. Uh, let's see. Okay, Tony. So that timeline icon, it looks like they're wondering what is that? What does that look like again? Uh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to turn on my webcam here and I'm going to see if <laughs> I don't do that very often. Let's, uh, okay. Hi everyone. Now, oh, there you are. Now, because my I've got this window behind me with all this light that comes in, and so it makes it me look real dark. Well, so I'm going to move my oh okay. I'm going to bring my the app close to my webcam, and for those of you viewing this live, you're able to see this. So in the upper right hand corner is what? How do you describe that? It looks like a a little clock with an arrow. Uh, yeah, and... so we wanted to portray kind of uh, time going backwards. Oh, okay. I like that. All right, so that's what it looks like. Uh, and you're welcome, Tony. So that seemed to work. Okay, let's turn off my cam. That's enough of seeing me. <laughs> um, uh, yes, Cassandra, uh, to answer your question. Uh, and good, Peggy, who says uh, she got it finally, and she's trying it out now. Jean says, time going backwards, so poetic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Uh, what else? Uh, Clarissa is wondering, is it possible to, or she says, how do you correct a duplicate entry? Possible through the app, or if, I mean, if that happens, what what do you do? You've got two people of the same name in there. So um, it is possible, but in the app, it's a lot of manual work. Um, I suggest these type of more complicated operations to actually try on the website. But um, I'm hoping to add a duplicate, merge duplicates feature in the future. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, good. We, I've gone through every single question here, so let me switch over to my computer here, Guy, and, and uh, if you have questions out there, uh, please continue to type them in, but I'm going to switch here and let's do some uh, some announcements and door prizes. So uh, our next MyHeritage-specific webinar coming up uh, Tuesday, June 25th, this will be by Mike Mansfield on Hidden Content Treasures. You might have missed it, MyHeritage. And if you've listened to Mike before, then you know it really doesn't matter what he talks on. He's always good, uh, but I'm sure the topic will be good as well. Uh, register up at FamilyTreeWebinars.com. Okay, if you are here, then uh, you are eligible to win. And, and first, I have a one-year my Heritage Complete Plan that gives you access to everything, and uh, I should have updated the slide. I think it's up to 9.7 billion historical records now, uh, adding new records all the time. Um, 
Okay, uh, who wants this? <laughs> let's let's uh, let's go through. I'm gonna just have my random door prize picker pick our winner here, and our winner of our first door prize is Terry Borden. Terry, congratulations! I know I've got lots of you writing in saying pick me. Now, no no hands this time. Uh, Barbara and let's go next to a my heritage DNA test kit and I'm just trying to think uh, what to say about this I mean everyone needs a needs a test kit right okay who wants a test kit I can see yeah Terry writes in very excited <laughs> you're welcome uh, Charles Wolf Charles Congrats. I hope that was fun to hear your name on the air. Uh, I'll be in touch. Uh, let's get your mailing address sent to me, okay? All right. Let's look for other questions. So, um, Guy, uh, Ken is one, Ken's wondering, he can see the timelines on his iPhone, but not on his iPad. Is, is that one of the things that's not on the iPad, or is it there? And where would he find it? Yeah, so we only release it on uh, phones, but we okay. are planning to uh, release it on iPads and tablets in the future. Okay. But currently, it's only on the phones. Okay, so Ken, you're not overlooking anything. Uh, just watch for an update uh, for the future. Okay, so lots of thank yous here. Uh, Dory has an interesting, interesting question. <clears throat> Dory says, what would be the main reasons I should use the app? on my smartphone instead of just going to the website from my smartphone so I'm really happy you asked that actually because it's something we kind of always uh, ask ourselves what what huh. even, what extra value we can give to our users via the app yeah so a lot of the features obviously I showed today are only available on the app and not on the website and um, just we we kind of always focus on giving you the best experience, the fastest performance, um, more features that uh, kind of uh, incorporate f things from your phone, like your camera, your microphone, uh, those kind of capabilities, and just give you a really smooth and nice experience. So, I mean, you obviously you can decide for yourself, but I hi yeah. highly recommend using the app on the phone. It's always on your uh, device's home screen you'll be able to get everywhere much faster and uh, you be the judge but uh, I recommend it yeah good yeah real good answer well Peggy writes in saying great I will need to go over the webinar again and practice on my phone so yeah Peggy I'll have this up uh, real soon well uh, type it quick if you're out there and you've got a question because uh, my queue right now is is all cleared out and uh, just in case there's nothing else uh, guy uh, are you going to give us a sneak peek to what's coming or is that always top secret uh it's a bit of a secret right now <laughs> but um i did hint on some of the things we're expanding some of the functionalities uh, yeah. we want to give you more uh, interesting information on the home screen uh things like that yeah good okay everyone i tried to tried to get it out of him well just uh now, do you announce uh, information about updates on the MyHeritage blog or anywhere where we can learn when, uh, when and what? So actually, in, I believe in the upcoming uh, MyHeritage newsletter, there will be a summary of these of the features I presented today, and uh, of, also a link to this webinar. But yeah, we usually can release a, a bunch together. And apart from that, you can always follow the updates of the actual app, and the new features will be written in the What's New section of the App Store. Cool. Okay. I like that. Um, Darlene writes, I find the app good for doing research or finding information when speaking with family members. So it's good for when you're away from your computer and you want to know something. Darlene, that happened to me exactly. I got a phone call. I, I was at a store somewhere, and... And my dad was asking a question about one of his cousins, and I had I pulled up my Heritage app right then and was able to uh, to share it with him. So yeah, I agree with you, uh, Darlene. 
Uh, Don is wondering, besides the the family timeline being free, is is there are are there any other, any other major things in the app that that uh, are also free? Um, well, let's see. I'll, there is a lot for free. Um, depends what you're looking for. We have some free collections that you can access via the research tool. Um, building your trees free until a certain amount of people. Inviting uh, your family members to participate is free. Um, the list goes on and on. Okay. All, all the photo uploading functions are free. Okay. Uh, very good. Thank you. Barbara is wondering, how do we get the newsletter? So if we're not getting it, it comes out once a month, I think. And if you're not receiving it, uh, do you know how we can sign up for the newsletter? Hmm, I'm not quite sure. I think uh, my Heritage users are automatically signed up for the newsletter. But um, yeah. it's something we can check maybe and get back to, to you. Yeah, okay. I'm thinking of going up to blog.myheritage.com and, and seeing if there's anything up there also. Um, because I think... Maybe follow us? Yeah, do you see... Oh, fo well, okay. So follow us. Here's uh, Facebook, Twitter. What's this one? YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Instagram and Pinterest. Uh, I think. <laughs> so, uh, so follow follow that way, and maybe there's somewhere on here to subscribe or to join the mailing list. I'm not certain. I think a a lot of the times. I'm looking down at the bottom. I think a lot of the times the articles that are on here also get included in the newsletter, and so you, um, you just for right now, uh, Barbara. Here I'm going to put this link in the chat area. Yeah, maybe there's a there's a link up here for email too. I'm not sure. Okay, Sonia said I added the URL to her Feedly account. Good. Well, if you don't get a newsletter, let's figure out how, because I've got uh, several people here asking about that. Um, Edward, here's a here's a neat comment. Edward says, last week I visited my family in Germany, and they were delighted watching the family tree I presented. He says uh, two people started to create their tree as a result. Well, that's neat. Edward, thanks for sharing that with us. Um... Yes, Barbara, Amsterdam is, she says, Amsterdam buildings are so interesting. Uh, I'll be there in September. So uh, I hope to see some of you there also. And Cassandra is wondering, when is Guy going to talk to us next? Well, I'll, sh I'll show you how we know all about that. Let's uh, just go up to familytreewebinars.com and type in Guy's name here. I don't know that... Uh, Oh, maybe it, did I misspell it? I think I must have misspelled it. Yeah, I think it. you had the S and the oh, Y backwards. Sorry. Okay. Well, just type in guy, and there we go. T S Y P E, and that'll take us right to his page. And uh, guy had he's up here two other times. So on the go, using your mobile device for genealogy, and uh, you also spoke at my heritage live in Oslo uh, last year. So we've got uh, these other uh, two classes up there. Uh, Cassandra, uh, nothing scheduled yet for the immediate future, but this is where you would uh, learn about it. And if you go up to, I'm going to just type in my Heritage Webinar. So I'm gonna, I'll put this link in there for you also, everyone. This is where you get uh, direct access to um, all of the my Heritage specific webinars. Tomorrow, I get to host uh, in Francais. Uh, a webinar about my heritage DNA. Uh, you know that once a month we have now a foreign language webinar, and those are well attended. I don't know what they say while they're talking, uh, but I'm certain that they're good. And uh, and then just scroll down, and this is where you get access to uh, everything else. Okay. Well, uh, guy, I think we've uh, we've we've made it. Uh, any. Anything else that you want to share with us before we say goodbye? Um, no, just uh, that I had a great time talking with uh, with everyone. Um, I'm always happy to receive your feedback about some of the features you try. Um, not sure if you had a chance to write my email, but uh, it was on my slide earlier. Oh, yeah. Tell us and, that again, uh, will you? 
Yeah, sure. It's uh, I'll spell it out. Okay. It's guy. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna type it in the chat area uh, for everyone. So it's guy g u y. Dot t s y p e. At myheritage.com. Okay, so I've put that in the chat area. So you're saying use that if we have comments or feedback or I could we share our ideas with you if we have some thoughts? Yeah, okay. I'll be very happy to hear your ideas. Yeah, okay. At the end of the day, we build uh, the features for you guys and uh, your feedback uh, means the world to us. Excellent. Okay, well, uh, Guy, this has been fun. Uh, very well done. Uh, professionally presented here. Uh, thanks for showing us all of the screens and uh yeah that was that was enjoyable uh so thank you guy and then thanks to all of you wherever and whenever you are around the world thanks for sharing part of your day with us and remember life is short do genealogy first bye everyone bye guy good luck we'll talk to you soon bye bye thank you <laughs>